I love my Ninja 5. I personally got it mostly to use with my Panasonic GH5S to record ProRes RAW. Like many folks, I use a standard SSD that I put inside of one of the sleds that Atomos gives you with the Ninja. What I really don't care for is how it sticks out the side. Now, to get around this, you would need to pick up something like the Atom X drive from Angelbird. They're much shorter and they don't hang out the side. Then I saw the prices. $400 for a one terabyte drive. So I decided I'd just live with a drive hanging out the side. Then a few days ago, I got a really interesting item sent to me from Andy Cine. They call it the Lunchbox. Awesome name in my opinion. It's a short drive enclosure that you can use with the Ninja 5. Of course, you need a drive for it. And for that, I have my Samsung T5. Now we're going to remove the drive from inside the T5 and install it into the Lunchbox. There are naked MSATA drives out there that look like they should work, but Andy Cine specifically tested and recommends using the ones from inside the Samsung T5. Plus the cost of a one terabyte drive isn't that much different than the T5 itself, so I'm just sticking to what Andy Cindy recommends. Now, before we get started, you might ask, is this process reversible? The thermal pads that we need to place inside the new enclosure are sticky and they might be difficult to pull back off. I suppose if you're careful, you, you might be able to carefully get them back off again, but I think it would be a huge pain in the butt. And let's be clear, doing this is going to void the warranty of your T5 in a big bad way. You are gonna need some tools. I'm doing this process for the first time right now, so I'm not exactly sure what tools you need, but I'll put them here up on the screen. Now, the first step is we need to remove these stickers off of each end of the T5 drive. For that, I'm going to try a pair of tweezers. I've got here just a standard computer toolkit. All right, let's give this a shot. Might be able to see here. That sticker is off. And now we've exposed some very small Phillips head screws. Let's get the other side done. Now I'm wearing gloves. That's just to be a little extra careful. Probably not needed. On the side with the USB-C, seems to be a little bit trickier. There we go. And all right, now we have both stickers off. Now let's get these screws out of here. Screw number two fell right out. All right, there's all four screws now. All right, now we want to gently press on the end that doesn't have the USB-C port in there. And it should, oh, nope, I was wrong. It looks like this end is just a cap. So we'll set that off to the side here. Now we'll press in, yep. And now here she comes. All right, there is the inside of a T5. Now, I believe some versions do not have this pad here. Instructions that I saw from Andy Cine, the one they had didn't have a pad, so let's see about getting that guy off. Okay. All right, that pad just easily peels right off. All right, now what we need to do is to, again, we have two Phillips head screws here. Having gloves on kind of reduces my dexterity here a little bit. All right, there's one screw and there is the other. Okay, with those two screws out, looks like we've got a, another screw here. All right, we have that screw out. All right. a Couple little clips holding this in. All right, now we have the drive. All right, let's go ahead and remove this thermal pad too because I think that's helping to hold the drive onto the connector here. Yep. Be 
very careful here. You don't want to end up breaking PCB of the drive here. Yep, and it just slides in and out, just like that. Slide it out. And that is actually the whole drive right there. The other bit is your controller, but this is the drive which we're going to need. So this is some of the main housing here of the lunchbox. Again, just a fantastic name. And the lunchbox also comes with a new controller. Let's go ahead and slide the drive into the new controller. And orient myself here. Make sure make sure that the chips here at the top that they're obviously they're facing up. This is just like an NVMe drive, so it goes in at an angle and you press down to secure the drive in with the two little screws that they include. Back to the Phillips head. Magnetic screwdriver helps quite a bit doing this. All right, place him down. Screw number one. All right. All right, now we are installed in the new controller. Any city includes some new thermal pads. Now, all we wanna do is cover the chips. So from the edge of the drive here to here. So we don't need all this extra pad. We're going to trim that. Let's find the best way. There we go. So we'll need some scissors for this process. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. As long as you're close. Looks like probably about there. All right. Let's cut thermal sheet. Now we got to peel off one of the backings. I wasn't wearing gloves, this would probably be a lot easier. Now we're going to need to remove the top cover of the thermal pad. And now we're going to Place this bit, your new drive in the controller, into the silver housing. And it's going to be upside down so that the thermal pad here is going to be pressing against the silver side of the enclosure. And obviously you want to make sure that your ports here are facing through the cutout. And that fits absolutely perfectly. Like there is like no wiggle there. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get another thermal pad that Andy Cine includes in the kit. And we're going to install that over the back of the drive. And it looks like with the piece they've got me, it's pretty darn close to covering the entire drive. So we should be good there. But you know... I don't want any bits of that thermal pad to be kind of hanging out, so I'm going to trim it long ways just a little bit, maybe about, what, half an inch or so? How does that look? Yeah. Yeah, that looks a lot cleaner. Peel off one side. Place that on the drive. Peel off the other side. even it's got a big bubble in it 
There we go. Okay. Now you can kind of see on the top of the lunchbox here, you have these sculpted edges. That's going to go right over top of the sculpted edges on the bottom piece of the drive. There's also an arrow on the red bit here that points towards the connectors here. We'll lay that on top and then we will get the screws that Andy Cine has sent along, along with an included Allen wrench. Let's install those. I like to go each corner first. Now you want them snug, but you know, don't go nuts with it. Now we'll double check each screw to make sure they are snug. And hey, I think we're done here. We have now turned the little T5 drive into the lunchbox. Absolutely love that name. Fantastic name. Feels very solid. Has a really nice look. I like this silver and red look. I am really, really happy with that. Now you'll just slide the lunchbox into the back of your Ninja. Red sight facing out, of course. Turn on the monitor. And if you go into the media section, you should now see the drive, which should show, depending on the drive you used, which in this case was the Samsung T5. So I'm actually gonna stop the video here, go out and shoot a little bit with this drive in the Ninja, and well, we'll see how it works. Okay, everything is working flawlessly. I pushed this drive as much as possible by shooting in 4K60 ProRes RAW. There wasn't a single hiccup. I absolutely love the form factor now. No more drive hanging out the side of my Ninja. Now Andy Cine tells me they've been testing drives that they performed this procedure on for the past few months or so, and they have not had a single issue either. Let's quickly compare the cost. It's $27 for the lunchbox. Now for me, the drive was free since I already had one, but if you need to go out and buy a new T5, they go for about $135 for the one terabyte version. So that's $162 compared to $400 for the one terabyte Angelbird drive. I wanna mention something else about the lunchbox here. This isn't just an aluminum enclosure like I believe the Angelbird is. Technically, I think Angelbird says it is CNC worked aluminum. The lunchbox is actually made from something called magnalium. It's a combination of 95% aluminum and 5% magnesium. This makes it actually stronger than aluminum, but almost as light with the same thermal properties of aluminum as well. A lot of airplane parts are made from magnalium because of these properties. Side note, magnalium powder is also used in fireworks, but with a 50-50 magnesium to aluminum ratio. When you see big sparkling fireworks and you hear all that crackling, that's usually from magnalium powder. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And if you try this procedure, please let me know how it went for you. Also, if anyone tries a different MSATA drive other than what was in the Samsung T5, definitely please let me know. I'd be really curious to see how that worked out. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a good one.